LAZ Quick Facts. When I rose to success on these YouTube streets, it was like 10 to 15 different other black YouTubers that went at my head. You feel me? Dissing me, play, making up fake rumors, spreading lies, playing with my kids' pictures, posting my addresses online for other haters. They did it all. Did you ever hear any of these haters go at any of these culture vultures that's coming on YouTube, stealing dudes' ideas and concepts and getting rich doing it? You'll never hear them come at them dudes, but they'll come at their own kind, and that's a fact. When I tell you, Attorney Mitchell and her team, they were with me every step of the way. I was stressed. It was very stressful. I contacted Attorney Mitchell and told her what was going on. Um, he was stuck in a in a jail in West Virginia. They actually lost his paperwork. So he ended up being in there for over two weeks. Once I explained everything to where we had to call, um, had to call to the courthouse. It was just a mess, and I don't know what I would have done without Attorney Mitchell. My case gave up in July two, uh, 2018, so I currently been incarcerated, about to be going on six years. I'm like I said, I'm 31, about to be 32. I don't have no kids or nothing, and these people, you know, these people trying to take the rest of my life away from me for something that I truly am not, am not responsible for. You know, I'm not responsible for this woman's death in no way, shape, or form. Let the people know, man, like where you from, like where you caught this case at and stuff. This call is from a federal prison. I'm, 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 I'm 30, I'm currently, I'm 31 years old. I'm currently in federal prison. I'm, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I don't know if y'all know it, but that's the, uh, that's the home of uh, the, the famous boxer Floyd Mayweather. But that's where I'm from. And I'm currently incarcerated on a, a three count indictment. They gave me life on, on count one, which is distribution of fentanyl resulting in death. Then I got a count two, which is distribution of fentanyl a half a gram. I was given 30 years for that. And count three is possession of fentanyl with intent to sell, and they gave me 30 years for that. And what ended up happening on my case is, it was alleged that, that I sold a half a gram of fentanyl to a guy that I knew to be an addict. This, and then after this, with, without my knowledge at all, he turned around and resold the half a gram to another guy. And this guy took the half a gram home to his girlfriend and they used the drugs, they used the half a gram and other drugs and the, and the girlfriend ended up overdosing dying. The end result ended up being that the girlfriend, who the, the woman who overdosed and died, she ended up being a judge's daughter out of my city in Michigan. And how, they, how did they supposedly trace it back to you? Like the, the, the dude that you sold it to went and told it, whatever? Yeah, after after the girlfriend died, the, the the boyfriend that was there with her, he ended up calling the uh, getting a hold of the ambulance and everything. They they came to respond and they said the girl was, that she was you know she was uh, deceased on arrival, and they took him to interview him and he said that he got the drugs from another guy, a guy named Blodgett, and they ended up setting up an undercover sale with the guy named Blodgett. They got him and when they got Blodgett, Blodgett said that he got the drugs from me and they ended up setting me up on the undercover sale. But I feel like it's it's just so much with my case though. Is is that the point of for sure for sure when I sold the drugs that I sold to the guy Blodgett, I sold him to, I sold him the drugs. It was in a lottery ticket folded up in a lottery ticket. When the guy sold the drugs to the to the other guy named Hall, Hall told the police in his interview that I have documents of that when he got the drugs from Blodgett that they was in a clear sandwich bag. So they can never even say that it's the exact same drugs anyway at all. And also, the woman who ended up dying, I got her autopsy report, and I also have it. Uh, it, I have it on my my two videos that I got made about my case, my two documentaries that's on my Instagram page. It shows it all. I have her autopsy report, and I have her death certificate. And on the autopsy report, it says she had seven different drugs in her system when she died. Also, she had a high alcohol level of two point four. This call is from a federal prison. The uh, alcohol level of two point four, which is three times the, the, the they, they they say is the legal amount for you to be able to you know function, and also she had heart problems. One side of her heart was uh bigger than the other, so they said she had an enlarged heart. So she had numerous medical issues. She had liver failure. She had numerous medical issues and seven different drugs. 
and they truly can never even say what she actually overdosed off of. And so after this, they said that they want to say fentanyl is the main cause because fentanyl is so strong and it's, it was a fentanyl epidemic and that's what was going on. So they really wanted to blame everything on fentanyl, but for sure, for sure, they can never even say what caused the death. The autopsy does not state that it was fentanyl that caused her to die. Nah, uh, they say they say that it was a mixture. It's on the autopsy report. It says that it's a mixture. And on her death certificate, it say that she died from an overdose on a combination. But due to her, uh, I mean, we all know what's going on. Due to her being, you know, a, a judge's daughter out of my city, and also her brother is a state prosecutor currently right now, still working in Michigan and in Grand Rapids. This is where it's really coming from, and I I, I, uh, I failed to mention that everybody involved in this case was was white, and I'm the only black male. So the guy that I sold to was a white male. The guy he sold to was a white male, and the female who overdosed and died was a white female. So with me being the only black guy involved in the situation, I feel like that's that's for sure where all of this comes from. Because to top it off of everything, I never sold any drugs to this woman that died. I never sold any drugs to her boyfriend who gave the drugs to her. So if you want to look at it, I'm three, four people behind. It would be kind of like if you use, a, I would say like an onion layer. If you cut an onion in half, how you know you got the middle part and you go above that to the other layer, that would be the guy I sold it to. Then you go above that to another layer, that's the guy he sold it to. Then you go above another layer, that's the girl who overdosed and died. I'm so far away from these people. I don't know nothing about these people at all or nothing was going on. Now, did these other dudes go to jail too? Yeah, and I, I'm glad you asked that. They end up giving the boyfriend, who was the one who gave her the drugs, they gave him a year in the county jail, a year in the county jail, and the guy who he who he got it from, the guy that I sold it to, they end up giving him two years in state prison, but he uh, he also received boot camp, and I don't know if, the, if any of the, uh, the listeners is familiar, but when you get boot camp, you really only have to go do six months off your sentence if they, if they make you eligible for boot camp. So he basically, you could say he got six months, you know, but up to two years in state prison for him distributing the drugs to the other guy and the other guy giving them to the girlfriend. And they, they their cases stay state. My case is the only case, I was the only one federally indicted. They never even got federally indicted or they never even got charged with the death. So they skipped over both of them and then jumped straight to me and indict me and charge me. And I ended up going to trial for it. I ended up having two trials actually. My first trial, I went, uh, it lasted about four days, and uh, I had, I did have a jury of my peers, you know, I can't lie on that, I, I picked a good jury, it was a lot of, you know, younger college students that I was able to pick, and they ended up giving me a hung jury at the end of the trial. Were, they said that they, were those jurors yeah. black, though? Well, no, some, I had, I probably had like three black, and I, uh, out, of, out of the 12, it was about three black, probably about I say about five white, and then the other was just a mixture. It was a couple of uh, Mexicans and a couple of natives on the, on the stand also. Yeah, right, you right. know, they just passed some new laws. I don't know if you know about those laws, but I've been talking about them on the channel. They just passed some new laws in January that kind of redefined what a jury of your peers are. You feel me? So yeah. you may have not really had a jury of your peers. You got to look into those new laws and see exactly what's up. You feel what I'm saying? Because they, you may think you've had a jury of your peers, but they still, they ain't got enough black people on your joint. You feel me? And, and if them dudes only got a slap on the wrist and you the only person that got uh, 30 years for this shit, that shit ridiculous, and it, and the autopsy doesn't guarantee that fentanyl was the was the primary cause of that death. Nah, bro, that sounded like a that sounded like a wrongful conviction. Yeah, that's for sure. I got I got so much numerous different pieces, like I said, of evidence. I even want to I even want to touch on the part of if you want to get specific with this with the law, with my indictment itself being a single man indictment. It's, it's four people involved, so y'all never even charged me with conspiracy because they knew they couldn't charge me with conspiracy because the definition of conspiracy is when two people come together with an agreement, you know what I'm saying, that we finna profit off, off a drug sale or that we finna profit off doing some type of crime. So I never came in an agreement with the guy who I was selling it to that he, me and him can sell it together and he can sell it to somebody else, so they couldn't charge me with conspiracy. So they charged me, I'm single man on my indictment with four people involved, how did that make sense with me being the only one charged? Because you can't get, you can't, it's A, B, C, and D, 
but you can't get the D without having B and C. So how is it just me charged and then D would be the girl that overdosed, but y'all don't got B and C, which is the two white boys who was in the middle who was selling it. That's also, crazy. So, so that alone, that alone supposed to have my whole my whole indictment is ineffective, and I, I can win just off that alone. I've truly been wrongly incarcerated. I also wanted to uh, continue to elaborate a little bit just to say, like, my situation, I, I fully understand, you know, my role that I played in this situation. I'm in no way trying to minimize what I did as far as me selling, you know, saying illegal narcotics. I come, I was raised, you know, raised up completely in the streets. I came from, you know, a single mother home as many of us did. And, you know, I, I, I never had a father figure around. I'm not, I'm not blaming my upbringing and what my actions, but... It's just, you know, the environment you grew up around, you end up becoming a product of your environment. So at the time, I felt like that was the only way I knew how to provide for myself was be in the streets. But like I said, I also, I fully understand that somebody did die and that's very serious. And you know, there's nothing to joke or a game about it. And nothing is also fentanyl is very serious right now around the whole world. And I also understand that. But my whole point is I just want fair justice for my situation. Cause I just truly feel like, like I said, I never sold no drugs to the woman that died, or I never sold no drugs to the to the guy that gave it to the woman that died. So I'm so far away from these people. Like, how could I be held responsible for her death? And, you know, period at all. And then not even let alone just me myself when it's others involved who sold to her that you know that don't have nothing to do with me at all that I don't even know. So I just that's one of my main topics is that. I just, I'm just trying to get fair justice for my situation, and also I wanted to say that uh, any of the listeners that they can check out my situation. I got, I got two other documentaries made about my case and videos that, that they're on my Instagram, and uh, any or anybody can follow me. My Instagram is is, is justice, which is you know J U S T I C E number the number four underscore, and it's lowercase T A E. And uh, everybody can follow me and check out my documentaries that I already got made about my case. Like I said, my whole point of everything is I'm just, I feel like I am truly wrongly incarcerated. I feel like I'm, I'm being, I was selective prosecuted in this racial discrimination because I'm the only black guy and the black guy gets charged, but the two white dudes get to go free. And it's just like the whole situation don't even make no type of sense. Like, I got so much power. On, yeah. Yes, that shit is crazy, bro. And, and you know, nah, that shit ain't, that shit ain't right and exact. That the only black, only the black dude got thirty years, and um, I got damn, life. I got life. <laughs> what you got? You got, got thirty life. to life or just I life? I, no, I got life plus thirty. I got life plus thirty, oh, man. They God. gave me life for the yeah. They gave me life for the overdose body, and they gave me thirty years for the for the half a gram of fentanyl. Oh. God, nah, nah, bro. We gotta get that story out there, man. We gotta get that story out there, and this is how this is how it's done, man. Now I mean, because if they can't prove that you so that you actually sold her a drug, then you know that's not right. That's not a rightful conviction, man. You feel me? And the law is the law. You feel me? Right or wrong, whether somebody was doing crime or not. You feel what I'm saying? The law is the law, and if they cannot prove that you sold her that shouldn't be laid up for her death i heard on the news not too long ago where they were saying that um they was trying to fight to be able to charge somebody in a fentanyl death but right now they was just charging people with a sale yeah nah yeah they definitely uh I, like i said i'm from michigan and they definitely been doing it around there since since roughly shit i say like the first time i heard about it was around like 2016 2017 so it's still kind of fairly new but yeah, they definitely doing it, man. And it don't even make sense because at the end of the day, yeah, everybody got their own choice in life. Yeah, a person got a choice to, you know, sell drugs, but a person also, I'm not, hey, you're not putting a gun to their head and forcing these people. It's the same thing if you want to use drunk drivers with, with alcohol, you know what I'm saying? They go buy the alcohol and they drink it, then they crash and kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's the same thing with a person who go buy a gun off the street and they go kill somebody. They not going back and charge the liquor store. They not going back to charge the person who they bought the gun from off the street. You know what I'm saying? With the death. So how could you, with the drugs, I feel like you should be in the exact same order. There's no difference. Yeah, man, that shit is a sticky situation, man. You feel me? But at the end of the day, you know, these laws that they create, and when laws get created in haste, those laws mostly end up affecting people of color. 
You feel me? Yeah, like exactly. when yeah, exactly. the law might yeah, the law might make sense to lock somebody up selling some some deadly shit, but if only black people and people of exactly. color is getting locked up for it, then that law should not exist. You feel me? Because it's unfair. My case came up in July two, uh, 2018, so I currently been incarcerated, about to be going on six years. I'm like I said, I'm 31, about to be 32. I don't have no kids or nothing, and these people, you know, these people trying to take the rest of my life away from me for something that I truly am not, am not responsible for. You know, I'm not responsible for this woman's death in no way, shape, or form. If you had made a direct sale to somebody and they had that on camera, and you know your paraphernalia was found. Where her, where her body was at or whatever, then that's a total different story. You feel yeah, me? None, but. Of this, none of this happened. None of this at all happened. And like I said, the most, uh, the most reason, well, like I said, the most important factor of the whole case and why I know what's going on is all, it's all due to the girl who overdosed, who her family is, her family ties. Like I said, her dad was a retired judge. He you know, out of my state in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he had been a judge for 17 years before he retired. And her brother is still right now, today, a state prosecutor. So this is really where everything came about. The whole case came from. We, we know where it stemmed from. Yeah, bro. That's 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 craziness, man. That's craziness. I mean, that's craziness, man. And you know, I ain't even know they was. Uh, I ain't even know they were giving people life for stuff like that. Like, did you hear anybody else? Did you run into anybody else that got a life sentence for this same type yeah. of? I ran into a couple. I ran into a couple guys since I've been in the feds that uh, definitely done got life sentences for the same thing, or they got 20 years, 20 or 30 years, depending on their back, uh, their background, criminal history. Mm. Yeah, they definitely doing us wrong, man. They doing us wrong all the way around. I appreciate everything, man. Like I said, I definitely need as much help and you know support as possible with my situation. And like I said, I definitely want everybody to go, you know, follow my Instagram and check out my whole story and my documentaries that I got up on there that definitely give all the full details and explain everything that I'm saying is exactly true. Nothing, nothing's fabricated. There's nothing, no false statements being made or nothing. I'm truly wrong incarcerated. Yeah, bro. And then, you know, like you were saying, man, like ain't nobody, ain't nobody come, ain't nobody was born and was like, yo, I want to be a drug dealer. Dude start selling drugs because of their circumstances. You feel what I'm saying? I grew up in a single, a, a black household with a single black mother. And I mean, raising me uh, across the hall from a crack, from a federal prison. across the hall from a crack spot in Brownsville, Brooklyn. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I seen a lot of good kids end up selling drugs. I seen a lot of smart kids end up selling drugs you feel what i'm saying so you know it's always a story behind why dudes was in the streets in the first place and i mean so and i got a story on my channel it's not a it's not a jail story it's a it's a funny story but i got a story on my channel from a dude from grand rapids his name is um mike book yeah he a rapper, his name is Mike Book, and he told one of the funniest stories of all time on my channel, man. So we got we got a nice little Grand Rapids audience on the channel. Yeah, I know, I, I know who he is. I know of him. I don't know him personally. Yeah, I know who he is. But he definitely rep, rep that Grand Rapids. Do that. What's the gram again? It's, uh, Justice. Oh, everything lowercase. Justice. And number four. And underscore T-A-E. I only got like like an 8k follower so you know the right page because it's like 10 fake pages you said justice for underscore t-a-e lowercase t-a-e i got like 8k followers laz quick facts when i rose to success on these youtube streets it was like 10 to 15 different other black youtubers that went at my head. You feel me? Dissing me, play, making up fake rumors, spreading lies, playing with my kids' pictures, posting my addresses online for other haters. They did it all. Did you ever hear any of these haters go at any of these culture vultures that's coming on YouTube, stealing dudes' ideas and concepts and getting rich doing it? You'll never hear them come at them dudes, but they'll come at their own kind, and that's a fact. When I tell you, I 
attorney Mitchell and her team, they were with me every step of the way. I was stressed. It was very stressful. I contacted attorney Mitchell and told her what was going on. Um, he was stuck in a, in a jail in West Virginia. They actually lost his paperwork. So he ended up being in there for over two weeks. Once I explained everything to where we had to call, um, had to call to the courthouse, it was just a mess. And I don't know what I would have done without attorney Mitchell. 